My name is Wiebke Pandiko. I'm a German jewelry artist living and working on Lautasare Island in Helsinki. I studied to be an artisan for goldsmithing and later a jewelry designer in Lahti. As part of my studies, I also decided to spend 10 months on exchange in Japan, where I learned the basics of Japanese lacquer work. Old crafts and traditions, their artistry, diligence and fine motor skills fascinate me. I'm eager to learn these skills, but I'm also curious and want to adapt the same kind of methods to working with new or unusual materials. I love to explore these materials deeply through a lot of trial and error until I am able to express myself artistically through them. I started to work with plastic bags immediately after my graduation, so around 2013-14. It took about one and a half years for me to understand the kind of thin translucent plastic bags one finds in grocery stores, well enough that I felt I had found in them something new and before unseen. The processes I developed to work with them are actually quite simple. Almost all of my pieces are made from plastic string or sheet, both of which I make with the help of a flat iron. In the accelerated video, one can see how basic thin plastic bags are turned into plastic strings and sheets. First, I cut off the bottom of the bag, fold them together and cut them into narrow strips. Usually I of course put many bags on top of each other, so I can cut a greater number of them at once. Now this kind of loop is twirled together at one end and then fused into a string with a flat iron. Logically, I don't touch the plastic directly with the flat iron, but always have a piece of baking sheet in between. When the one end is fused, I also twirl the rest of the loop together and then fuse that as well. Then the whole string is heated once more from the other side, so that it fuses completely and becomes round. The right temperature and pressure are very important, and it took quite a long time to find out what they are. For a sheet, I only need to fold the bag, but here, finding the right temperature was harder. On my flat iron I always make the plastic string on the highest temperature setting, but a sheet will turn out full of holes if the temperature is too high. A setting in between silk and wool tends to work for me, but still I need to be much more careful when fusing the sheet and have to do it much slower. It also needs a higher pressure. So a technique that is basically quite simple needs exactness and a good knowledge of the material to yield the desired result. Water-themed pieces like the sea weave necklace shown at the very start and the tide root brooches are usually made only from plastic string. To fix the plastic to the wood, I usually just drill a hole and melt the plastic into it. Of course, if need be, I also fix something in place with glue. Then I start melting strings onto the piece side by side and shaping them until I have the desired appearance. When working with the soldering iron, I continue to be very careful about the heat. In between 200 and 220 degrees Celsius, the plastic melts but doesn't burn or smoke, which means I don't have to continuously inhale possibly harmful gases.
As for the tight roots brooches, they also contain many other shapes than just strings, but most of these are also easiest to create by using the basic plastic string I've made with the flat iron. Herbarium pieces, plant-themed necklaces, are necklaces full of small leaves reminiscent of different botanical genera of plants. For these leaves, I cut their basic shapes out of plastic sheet first and then shape them with the soldering iron. The video shows how tropaeolum, hedera and fallopia leaves are created. It becomes obvious that making these pieces takes a lot of time. This video is also sped up and then still cut drastically. The work is slow, but it calms me and is almost a bit like meditation. The motions are in my muscle memory and my hands perform these basic procedures basically on their own without me having to actively think about it. Especially this part, where I shape each leaf into its final form, happens mostly subconsciously. I like being outside, of course, also looking at plants, so the shape of their leaves is very familiar to me. But in this case, my hands kind of just move and something comes into being, while my mind can be in another place entirely. I think many people who do handcrafts know this feeling, how sometimes something is created almost without the maker being quite present. Only at the end of the process, when the leaves are assembled on a plastic net, which has been fixed to the piece of wood beneath, I have to really concentrate and plan again. But even there it tends to feel as if the piece grows by itself, almost like a real plant. But why plastic bags? Without the ubiquitous plastic, our civilization wouldn't be possible. 
there are moments when the use of plastics is the best or even the only option. Unfortunately, this isn't always the case. Especially plastic bags are an obvious symbol for mindless consumerism and a throwaway society. This makes them so interesting for me to work with. To create from them textures and structures that recall forms of a natural world which we have set ourselves apart from. It took thousands of years for oil to form from dead organic material and it took more time and energy to produce plastics from oil. In contrast, a single plastic bag is, in the worst case, often used only for minutes. It fascinates me to give these used plastic bags a new life, a new form that is reminiscent of those organisms without which the plastic itself wouldn't exist in the first place. When I create these pieces, I use plastics as a valuable material. Just as in the tradition of craftsmanship one might use wood, fabric, glass or precious metals and others. It took a long time for me to get to know this material, and I found positive things about it. It takes practically any shape and is quite durable when being used, though I'm not yet able to tell how well it will keep over time. Still, I really don't like plastic bags, but since we already have so many of them, I think it would be nice to at least recycle them and all other plastics more effectively, and maybe in the future make do without this kind of problem plastics. I'm of course aware that I'm unable to do much about the massive amounts of plastic waste in this world with these pieces. But maybe I can inspire some thought. Maybe I can have a little influence on the perspective people usually tend to have of plastic bags as worthless, ugly, dangerous waste. This they are, of course, but then our own behavior has a lot to do with this. We are searching for new solutions, but it seems as if we still don't quite understand what impact, for example, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch will have in the future. If a crystal grows in an oversaturated liquid, what will grow in a sea oversaturated with plastic? What if some organisms would start to use plastics the same way corals use calcium carbonate? Quite fantastic thoughts, maybe. And these only from the positive end of the spectrum. In any case, to us plastics are commonplace, invaluable, yet insignificant. For me, they bear the possibility of beauty. <laughs>